He's not making it up. Objection, Your Honor. Argumentative. Move to strike. Sustain. You don't know which facts are creative in this story that he was writing Lori Vallow, do you? I know that we were able to vet and verify an extensive number of facts from that story. Okay. I couldn't tell you whether the explicit sexual detail is accurate or not, but okay. the other elements are accurate. Okay. So when we go back to this lolly time that's up on the, the board here and, and showing us, um, the last line is, I would happily join you tomorrow if it felt like heaven would not strike us down. You see that line? I do. Okay. Um, and you said you didn't offer any explanation as to what that meant. On direct, I did not. Okay. And that was on August 11th of 2019. That's correct. And it talks about heaven would strike us down it in does. regards to the relationship. Say again? Well, it's in regards to the relationship because I will happily join you tomorrow if it felt like heaven would not strike us down. That's what that says, isn't it? It does. Okay, so that has nothing to do with murder, does it? I don't know that I could say entirely that it doesn't. Okay. Okay. Does it have anything to do with the fact that maybe Mr. Daybell felt he couldn't divorce his wife, Tammy? I don't know whether that's what that's in reference to or not. Could it have anything to do with the possibility that Chad Daybell, as this so-called visionary who gets these premonitions, wouldn't leave his wife, Tammy, until his premonition came true that she would pass away? Objection, Your Honor, misstates the evidence or the prior testimony. Overruled. You can answer that, officer. Again, I don't know what was in Chad Daybell's mind as it relates to why heaven would strike him down if he joined Lori Vallow at that point. Okay. Tens of thousands of text messages, right? Yes. Okay. I didn't see... I didn't see in any of these, and if you have them in the other 10,000 that you went through, show me the one that says, hey, this is Chad. Let's kill the kids. Objection, Your Honor. Argumentative mis and tries to put evidence, not in fact. Overruled. Facts, not in evidence. Well, it's a it's question on cross. It's overruled. Show me the text. It says, let's kill the kids. Well, that is argument, Mr. Pryor. If you want to ask if there's a text, that would be different. Is there a text that says, let's kill the kids? There are several texts that talk in detail about the deaths of those two children, yes. Oh, well, in detail about the deaths and what happened during their deaths, right? Not let's kill the kids, are there? Wait, wait a minute. What do you mean what happened during their... What happened? What I'm saying is that you there's references to Ty Lee and JJ throughout text messages, correct? Yes. Okay. But there is not a text message that says, let's kill the kids, is there? There are text messages in those specific words, no, but certainly alluding to and planning for the deaths of Ty Lee and JJ, yes. Okay. And what in reference to how they're planning to, to kill the kids, why don't you talk to me a little bit about that? What exactly uh, did you come across that says, let's plan on killing the kids? Objection, Your Honor. Misstates the testimony. It's argumentative. Uh, that is sustained. Okay. You just made reference to the fact that there are uh, text messages that talk about the planning of killing these kids, right? Correct. What text messages are you referring to? There are several text messages between Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell that refer to a plan to take the children and uh, Chad Daybell's ability as a supposed visionary to uh, understand when that might happen. Okay. Okay. So there's no specific text message that talks about we're going to kill the kids and live happily ever after, is there? I would disagree. Contextually, I think that's the meaning of those texts. Okay. So in other words, you're interpreting those texts how you think they should be understood, right? 
Well, those texts talk about the deaths, using the word death of Tylee and JJ. It talks okay. about their death percentage, and both Tylee and JJ ended up being murdered. So I, if that's context, then that's the conclusion I draw, yes. Okay, so what you're referring to are the text message where, where a numeric number was assigned to particular children about death percentages, correct? Assigned by Chad Daybell, yes. Right. Now, we talked a little earlier, and, and, and that's why I'm leading into this with you. And you could probably help me a little bit. Um, my recollection is you were talking something about Allie Bloomer, right? Yes, that's the second slide. Okay. Well, it's actually the third slide, isn't it? Oh. Can you go to the third one? You threw me off, right? Uh, it starts on the second slide, and then the it continues to the third slide. So you, so you talked about the fact that because Chad Daybell put a numeric number on the children, that was the reason they were killed, right? No, I wouldn't state it that way, that that was the reason they were killed. Okay. That supported your theory that they were killed because they were put a, a, a dark number on them, right? I believe the dark number provided the justification okay. for them to carry out those acts. Okay. Okay, so... When we go down to line 3000, would you read that one for me? The first two sentences? Yes. Allie Bloomer is 4.1 dark. Her cop husband is three dark. Okay. Now, to your knowledge, are Allie Bloomer and her husband dead? To my knowledge, they are not. Okay. So when you assign a number dark, Explain this. I mean, you probably know better than I do. Um, is this something that's part of the LDS faith? Not to my knowledge, no. Is there a reference in the LDS faith to light and dark? Light and dark. Uh, yes, there's reference throughout the Bible and the LDS faith to, to light and dark. So if there was previous testimony by someone who suggested that light and dark is not part of the LDS faith, they're either mistaken or they're not being truthful. Would that be fair? I don't think light and dark, as assigned by Chad Daybell, is part that's, of the LDS faith. That's not what I asked you, sir, and I appreciate you, you answering that way. What I asked you is that is, it, there is light and dark in the LDS faith, right? Objection, Your Honor, ask and answered. Overruled. It's overruled. There's a light and dark in the LDS faith, right? Yes. Okay. So what we're talking about is that there's a numeric system here. Is that what you're telling me that Mr. Daybell is using? There is a numeric system that Mr. Daybell is using. Okay. And you've never seen this with anybody else ever putting in a numeric system on light and dark, correct? I have not. Okay. Okay. And Allie Bloomer and her cop husband are not dead, right? To your knowledge? To my knowledge, they are not. Okay. So is the, do you know how this dark numbering system works? Is high good or is low good? Or how does that work on the dark spectrum? From what I've been able to decipher based on my participation in the investigation, uh, the higher the number, the worse it is. Okay. So if you're a one dark, that you're better off being a one dark than you are being a four dark, right? Correct. Okay. Okay. All right.
Judge, could I have um, Exhibit 6 and 7? Yes, I'll have the bailiff bring those over. And if you could just bear with me. While I'm waiting this to, to warm up a little bit, we'll move on and talk about a couple of other topics while I'm It talked about manipulation, right? From both Chad and Lori. Yes. Now, um, Mr. Pryor, just on the exhibit you've got continually being published there, if you're done with that, would you remove it from being published? Now, your testimony is that you felt that Chad was um, using his religious knowledge or beliefs to manipulate Lori Vallow, correct? Correct. Okay. So he was uh, suggesting that uh, because he has so much insight that he's uh, with these religious insights that he's able to convince Lori Vallow to stay with him because he has religious insight. Is that correct? He was looked to as the visionary for this small group. And in that capacity, yes, uh, used that to keep Lori Vallow in a relationship with him. And, and the small group you're talking about, who did you discover was in this small group? The inner circle is really a trio of Chad Daybell, Lori Vallow, and Alex Cox. Anybody else? That's what I would refer to as the inner circle. There were others that were more peripheral. Okay. And when you say more peripheral, um, shared some of the same religious views that Chad Daybell has. Yes, I would describe them as adherence to Chad Daybell's doctrines. How many of those do you talk about that are peripheral people that were adhering to it? Six to ten. Okay. Would... Um, Would Melanie Gibb be included in that group? Yes. David Warwick? Yes. Zaluma Pastenas? Yes. Okay. Melanie Boudreau? Yes. So this 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 wasn't a large group of people then. No, uh, Chad Daybell spoke at a lot of conferences and those were larger, but I don't, you know, I can't speak to how his message was received by those people. And when you say Chad Daybell spoke at these conferences, um, you touched on it a little before that maybe Lori Vallow wasn't believing everything that Chad was saying about this religious stuff, right? No, I don't believe I said that. I, I do believe she believed okay. pretty much everything that Chad Daybell said. Okay. And 
maybe what you testified to is that you questioned the accuracy of it in one of the text messages that you put up on the board. Do you recall saying something about that? No? I don't, if you can direct me to this particular message. So Chad Daybell started writing these books well before she ever met Lori Vallow. He met Lori Vallow, correct? Yes. And he wrote these books about his experiences and about his theories and interpretation of uh, what he felt was uh, the teachings of the LDS faith, right? Objection, Your Honor. Introduces facts, not in evidence. I believe counsel's testifying. Sustained. Well, he wrote a lot of books about religious uh, issues, correct? Yes, I think most of his books had to do with kind of an end of times theme. And um, he would go on these various, uh, uh, go to various places and speak about his, his books and try to sell books. Correct. This was sort of a, uh, a way to market or to, to make a living by talking about various religious feelings about religion. And then he'd go on and speak to people. And then in the meantime, try to make a living or try to make money selling these books to people, right? Yes. And the predominant audience that he would go to, these, these encampments, these, these gatherings, these, these, these um, various locales, for the most part, they were uh, centered around Utah, correct? No, I mostly, uh, well, St. George, Mesa, um, there was one in Boise, right. so the, well, the Intermountain West. And and you, you beat me to the punch, because I was about to start with Utah, then say Arizona, then say Idaho, but, um, you know, the, the predominant audience that uh, these books were marketing to were people in Utah, Arizona, uh, Idaho, correct? That's where he spoke, yes. And they were predominantly marketed to people of the LDS faith, right? I think so. And they were marketed to the people who would um, want to go to these various seminars about preparing for the end of, uh, of time, right? Yes. And uh, these people aren't, weren't all members of a cult, were they? Not to my knowledge. And there were various audiences who would show up and he listened to Chad Daybell talk and sell his books, right? Yes. So the fact that he has Lori Vallow, Alex Cox, Melanie Gibb, and David Warwick, um, who were friends of his, right? Well... I think the relationship with Alex Cox and Lori Vallow was closer than what it was different than those other names that you mentioned and closer than friendship. Right. But let's take, uh, and we'll talk a little bit about the Alex Cox, Lori Vallow relationship, but let's, as far as the other words were concerned, all of the emails and text mess, or excuse me, all of the text messages, excuse me, that you talked about, um, they, they had a recurring theme. These people were friends, right? Yes. And these friends talked about religious beliefs, correct? Yes. And these religious beliefs may not be what everybody else believes in, uh, but they seem to have a consistent um, theme, and, and, the, and they were all consistent in believing whatever uh, Lori, Chad, David, and Melanie were talking about. Would that be fair? I think that's fair. Okay. So when you talk about a group— we're really talking about a group of friends who have some, maybe not traditional beliefs, but have religious beliefs, correct? Yes. Okay. Now, the text I put up there from Lori to Chad, and it's the one line 836. Oh, wait. Let me know when you're ready. Mm -hmm. You can. You all said? Yeah. Okay. Um, is, is, would, would you take that as um, being in a, in a, 
would you take that as being in somewhat of a sarcastic tone? No, I think Lori was was pushing Chad and was serious. Okay. So you should give all of your love and your attention to your wife and family. That's what she's saying, right? Yes. I'm just a distraction. Go have fun with your family. There's nothing sarcastic about that? Well, if you look at Chad Daybell's reaction, which is that is so crushing and I feel so destroyed inside, I don't think he took it as being sarcastic. Okay. I really do want you to. I just can't be in the way anymore. If things change, then we can talk. But we have nothing until things change. So she's basically drawing a line in the sand and saying, unless something changes, um, we have nothing to do with each other. Would that be fair? Yes. Okay. So what she's doing is she's saying that unless something happens, either you divorce your wife or you kill your wife or your wife dies, you don't have me. I agree. Okay. And then Chad responds, I'm constantly begging for change below. You see that? I do. But I'm hindering your life and you deserve better. I love you so intensely. Okay. You see that? I do. The text following that, did they, did any of them say, all right, I agree with you, Lori. Let's, uh, let's kill Tammy. You find any of those? I found a number of texts uh, talking about Tammy's death percentage in right. subsequent conversations. Yeah. You're also aware that Tam that Chad Daybell, um, maybe you're not, but are you aware that since 2016, Chad Daybell had been talking to these public uh, audiences about the fact that Tammy was going to have a very short life? I was aware that he made those statements to particular individuals. I'm, I'm not aware that he spoke of that publicly, but yes, I know that he communicated that Tammy was going to die to a number of people. Right. And these other individuals are our friends and family of Chad Daybell, uh, who are also fans, fan, friends and family of Tammy Daybell, correct? That I don't. No, I can tell you the ones that I do know that he spoke with okay. that I, and I'm not aware that they knew Tammy. Okay. Okay. So it wasn't necessarily a, a secret that Chad was keeping with anybody since 2016 that he felt he had a premonition or a belief that his wife was going to have a short life, right? There were certain people he communicated that to, correct? Right. And when I'm reading through the text messages and you went through your presentation, am I wrong when I'm reading these messages to, to, to read into this, that Chad was waiting for Tammy to pass away. And that was what the delay was, correct? It could be that, or it could be waiting to take action. Okay. So we don't know what it was, right? From the investigation, I believe I know what it was. Okay. Well, you know, people differ in their opinions, right? They do. Yeah.
Judge, um, could we approach for just a minute? Yes. 